Okay, welcome to my presentation on Burma landscape architecture. So, a quick summary of what BIM is, is design is a very small part of actually running a building and that at in each stage of a project, lots of information gets lost when you PDF and then you build up the next set of information. So, theory is that you put all the information into one 3D model essentially, where everyone can access it and you just build and build and build and you manage off that, you plan off that, construct off that. And so you build up lots of cool dimensions. So you go kind of 2D, 3D, go 5D, you start adding the cost and the costing and all this will start looking into that. 6D, sustainability, life cycle. So these are really good kind of 6 and 7D, really good for landscape, but you have to build up from the ground because then you have no model to put your sustainability information into and the BIM execution plan the reason we're going to look at software a lot is that you respond to a tender with a BIM execution plan and it's likely the architect will get it and they'll specify but likely again it will be autodesk remit so this is kind of the big BIM software and it's quite different to other softwares and that is object orientated programming which essentially means you build everything up in objects so the wall family sits on a floor family and the roof family sits on the wall family and this means they can all yeah they can all inherit properties from each other and they all have specific things they can do and you'll see in a second So, one sec. So, if we have a look inside Revit here, you can see these are all different views. And whenever you build something, you kind of need to choose which family you're going to use. So we activate a view and we put in a planting family. You can then choose which type you use. And because the objects really, there's only there's only one type of each and as you move it everything's like live updating because there's really only one and you're, you're just viewing it from different angles and here you can see that the trees because a planting family follows the topography they're all updating their heights and here so then you can start tagging them and a tag is just another family that can inherit properties from the planting family so you can start changing the tagging automatically and everyone can work in this live exactly like google docs so the engineer architect landscape architect they're all building the site at the same time which is really really good to see what everyone else is doing and especially with clashes and um, so there's revit bim and you're adding in lots and lots of information which they call them front heavy because it wants a lot of information up front really quickly, which can make it really hard to run through lots of design options. So for that, you have other programs that work really well with Revit, especially Dynamo, which is like visual programming. So it makes using the computer to run through design options, like it makes programming easier. But, and over here, you've got Rhino and Grasshopper, which, Grasshopper is essentially the same as Dynamo, but just a lot more developed. And so you've got a lot of good plugins around it that people have developed. So especially now, and I think especially for landscape, creating like really fluid geometric forms, Grasshopper and Rhino are really good. So we want to link them, which we will do with Speckle. And off you going. So this is kind of just to show what computers do best. They do simple things really fast. Like imagine you had to write 3,000 numbers. Like a computer is just perfect for that. So that would just spit out these numbers really quickly. And there's these kind of things you want the computer to do, like run through lots and lots of options. So here, this is Dynamo and Revit. 
I just write a simple script to create random points. And this is just going to be how many points, like the density of it. So you can super quickly create different options. And then the good thing about Dynamo is that you can then place Revit families on these points. And that doesn't have to be points, it could be anything. But so we'll place oak trees on these and we'll join back up these points. And then there you go, we've just created a lot of Revit families quickly and we can run through options really fast. So this is visual programming. So say an architect built a building right through the middle of existing trees. We can take that and what we're going to do, we're going to send it into Speckle, which is just like a cloud data storage. It's going to take the data and then it can send it straight out to Grasshopper. And we want to create like a live link because you don't want to export a file and then import a file like constantly. We want it to be able to auto update. So now we're in Grasshopper, we're going to import that. Then you just give it the stream ID and it will do it. And so this is just going to take a second. First time it takes a bit longer. But this is going to import our data. And as the data changes in Dynamo, it will auto update into here. So this is kind of the raw data that it took, the tree points in the building shape. So now we can build off it. So we've got our trees in our building. And now for a computer to run through options, you need to give it parameters to try. So we can try to rotate the building everywhere. So that gives us 180 degrees that we can test out. And then we also want to query like which rotation of the building would cut down the least trees. So you can start seeing the tree count, which would be useful. And so the common thing architects would do is, or like if you're analyzing a building, you um, analyze kind of the total solar radiation that would fall on it. So you can input a weather file here, get the sun position for every hour of the year, and then you can calculate the total solar radiation that will fall on the building. So then if we run that, you can see there, you know, I'll turn that off. Yep. You can see the total, so that's total radiation for every hour of the year. And then what's good about this is you can then rotate and it's going to recalculate really quickly every rotation for every hour of the year while we're getting so total radiation and tree intersection, like how many trees would need to be cut down, is also being calculated. And so this, like the, this would be, if there was only one objective, like just the least amount of trees cut down, you could use something like Galapagos and Grasshopper. Um, but because it's multi-objective and these like potentially are competing with each other, you need like a multi-objective, well, I'm going to use a genetic algorithm. And um, with computer problems, like there's always, not in this specific case, because it's really simple, but say we added another input parameter, there would be way too many options for a computer to run through. And so you want to try, basically you use a genetic algor algorithm and it's going to try to find the best solution as quickly as possible so that you don't have to test every option. And so that's what we're going to use here. So this is going to plug into Rhino and we're going to input all 180 degrees of possible rotation and then the outputs or the like multi-objective is going to be minimize radiation and minimize the amount of trees that get cut down. So we'll go back to Rhino, our grasshopper. And so that's going to connect to the server and then that's going to output our building rotation degrees and then Going back into it, it's going to be how many trees to cut down and the total solar radiation. And then based on based on what goes back out, it will calculate it and it will try a different building rotation. So we'll run this. And OK, 
Okay, so this is going to start outputting numbers and it's going to quickly try and not guess, but it's going to try and optimize what it's putting out so it can find the best solution as quickly as possible. And so those are going back out to the algorithm. And now we'll just speed this up. Cool. And so now if we look at the results, you can see along the bottom of the graph is the amount of trees that would get cut down. And up the left of the graph is the total solar radiation. So here you can, we can pick like the least radiation possible and reinstate that, which on the right. So that's that design option. You could also pick the least trees cut down and reinstate that. So that's that design option. Or in this case, you could kind of pick, you could pick in the middle, which is kind of the best of both worlds in this case. And the other thing that I forgot to point out is red represents, um, it represents which design option it was. So you can see that the red are the latest design options that tested. And so very quickly on, it's starting to guess in the right direction, which is the kind of lower left corner. So then like way, way quicker than testing every rotation, it's starting to get there. So we can reinstate kind of our best design in this case. Yep. And then because, because we're working with families in Revit, we can send that back to Dynamo. And again, this is, we can create it all live linked up. So we'll, I will delete this building so we can see it. Cool. And join it back up, run it. And this is our new building that's been run through a genetic algorithm and is tested. And in this case, it actually only was four degrees off, but that literally is just fluke. So, Look at what we've just done with um, basically we're working in a BIM environment with architects, engineers. It wants a lot of information, like spreadsheets, everything attached to the models. So it becomes harder and harder to run through options quickly. Um, but things like Dynamo, like visual programming help a lot. Um, but in this case, Grasshopper, which is the same, it's just a lot better developed and we wanted Ladybug to do the solar radiation and discover for the genetic algorithm. So we create a live link that's just going to send data back and forth between these two. So suddenly we can use Grasshopper. And Python's just a programming language that kind of trickles through everything and really easy to learn, super helpful and yeah. So, okay, and so to finish up, I just want to say that this is an insane time to be alive, really. Like, computers and software, like way worse than what we have now, used to cost like a hundred grand for the software and only the aerospace industry would use it. Um, computers, another hundred grand, get a whole team of people to run it, is now like, everyone has laptops faster, free software that's way better. And then, especially kind of anything, as you start building up data in a BIM environment, in the past you'd need like a supercomputer with a team of scientists to analyze it, whereas now, like for free, we can use the exact same machine learning algorithms that Google use, and we can rent space on a thousand cloud computers for like no money, and we can learn anything for free. So yeah, it's really, really good. Oh, I love it. It's my presentation. Thank you, everyone.